is going to read this eventually. So you have to still be short, you have to still be punchy, you have to still have a call to action, but you have to also keep in mind these keywords and balance both of those when you're writing your description. Great. Next, let's talk about outmaneuvering your competition, which is really my fancy way of saying optimizing for your rank. Now, this part's kind of obvious, right? Like everyone wants to be a number one app, but how exactly do you get to be number one? First, let's talk about how rank is determined. It could possibly, maybe, could be by some of these elements determined by downloads. Everyone knows that, right? Number of downloads is good, but that's not the only way it could be judged. It could be judged by the active installs. That's how many people currently have it on a device at any given moment in time. It could be judged by the velocity. That's how many downloads you're getting over a certain amount of time, you know, a week, a day, whatever that happens to be. It could be the ratings, both the number of ratings and the quality of those ratings. You know, I have a lot of different ratings or I have a lot of, a few very good ratings. And the usage, it doesn't help it if people have it on your phone and never use it, never open it, versus people who open the app every single day, that could go up the charts. Now, why did I say kinda, sorta, maybe? I don't actually know how the ranks are determined. So, they so the stores don't, they don't publish what their algorithm is for determining rank. No, I I've never seen this before. No, that would be silly. You just have to silly. try to guess, right? In fact, they actually change it up often just to try and keep people on their toes. It's as if, imagine if Bean released a press release and said, this is how we determine what the number one website is. Every single website is just going to optimize for those specific things that they're searching for and just try and cheat the system to get number one. They try to make this a moving target so people can't cheat the system, so they can make the best game possible and have to optimize for all those different metrics in order to actually get up the charts. Because ideally, you shouldn't say, well, active installs is the only thing that matters. I can ignore every other metric as long as I have a good amount of active installs. That's not really good for the store. It's not good for the players. They have to change it up. So, so help me out here, because my team, we're getting ready to publish uh, zombie pumpkin slayers to the store. Mm -hmm. And we want to maximize downloads. We want to have the most active installs. That's what you're telling me. So how do we do this? What are some good ways of doing this? Well, there's always brute force. It has been you know, a tried and true method. You can have ads everywhere. You can buy ads. I'm sure you've seen some of the big mega games that spend literally millions of dollars on ads. Or for an example, in other medium, say you watch a new movie's coming out. You see a billboard of it, you see ads pre-roll before your Twitch videos, you see it on TV. And the theory of those ads is not that I see that billboard, I'm going to go watch that movie. It's I see that billboard, I see that pre-roll ad, I see that trailer before this other movie, and maybe that third or fourth time you see it, you think, well, maybe I might be interested in that. And then you actually go research that product or you go want to see that movie or you go download that app. And this has been proven by many studies. A lot of people who have marketing as their full-time degree that figure that out. And it definitely works, but it takes a lot of money to actually do that. It's not really practical to buy one billboard or one series of banner ads. So if you're only going to sink you know, just $1,000 into some click ads, probably not going to see very many results from it. So you have to be able to think creatively on how to optimize for those metrics. Now, I could talk for days, years, months, on all different ways to think creatively. And bottom line, it really comes down to your game. Your game might have some better way to market than other games. Some games will do one thing which doesn't work for another way. You really have to think on a per game basis how to get this up, get this more popular. Those examples we were listing earlier had very different ways. Minecraft marketed very different than Flappy Bird, very different than Angry Birds. There isn't one universal formula. But they did keep in mind how they were going to get known. They did have a strategy. It wasn't just, well, we'll hope the community will market for us virally. They had some method. So let's say that you know we're going to release Zombie Pumpkin Slayer, but my friends are releasing another game. Can mm -hmm. I cross market with them? Absolutely. Cross promotion is a really good way to do it. I mean, if you don't know another indie developer, get in the chat and start introducing yourself to people because there's so many developers out there who are in the same situation as you. And you guys are making games. It's a really great industry to be in because the competition kind of isn't really competition. You know, if I'm making an app, if I'm making a to-do list, I'm making some calendar, 
I'm only going to have one to-do list, one calendar on my phone. So there's some real competition for that space. But a game? Gamers play multiple games. If in your game you recommend your friend's game and vice versa, that player is just going to go to both. And in my game, Blast Monkeys, when we were number one, we were cross-promoting with a game called Zoo Club. You know, we were a physics-based puzzle game, and they were this uh, management zoo tycoon game. So very different audiences, very different keywords. People were finding us in the stores very different ways. But in Blast Monkeys, there was a zoo club world, entire levels themed to it. And in the corner of every level of that world was a button that said, oh, go here to play Zoo Club. And in Zoo Club, you could get Blast Monkeys as an animal for your zoo. Theme matched perfectly, right? Yeah. As we were number one, they went to number eight. Because it wasn't just that we gave them players, but they were giving us players, and we both shot up the charts because of it. So it's mutually beneficial. Absolutely. Great. And this isn't just, oh, this is something that because you're a small indie you're going to do and you can't afford real advertisement. This is what Zynga does. This is Zynga's secret sauce. They may have a really big popular game, they make a new game, and then they market that in their existing game for free and get the equivalent of million dollar ad buys for free because they're marketing to their existing player base in their previous game. Cross promotion is a really good technique to build up momentum. And the more friends that you can get together to do it, the better. And I wouldn't just basically say, you know, throw in a batter ad and you'll be good. Having that full integration is nice. Having some page that says, here's, you know, games I recommend is nice. But again, exactly how you implement that has to be in a per game basis. You can't have a, you know, zoo club world in every single game. It just worked really nicely for two friendly indie devs from the Bay Area who knew each other and had two animal themed games. Great. Probably the number one thing that I would recommend though is preventing uninstalls. Too many people think it's just about downloads, just getting as many people to look at the game as possible. But if they're looking at the game and then immediately uninstall it, that really hurts your active install metric. And that matters a lot more than people think. So you want people to keep it on the phone as long as possible. Because once they have it on the phone and then get rid of it, they're not going to keep playing it. And I know I say phone all the time because I talk mobile. That's where a lot of my experience come from. But this is the exact same stuff if you're doing a PC game, doing a Windows Store game, doing an Xbox game, same logic applies. Once you have the game and then remove it, you're very unlikely to install it again. So how do you prevent it from being uninstalled? Number one way I found, keep the file size small. For a phone specifically, if my phone is out of memory, which happens all the time, I go to my apps list, I sort by size, delete the top one. If your app is two gigabytes, it's going to get deleted first. Well, I don't and care how that can affect it downloads too, right? Because of the constraints that carriers put on download size. Absolutely. There's a, I believe it's a 50 megabyte limit now. Uh, it might be it's been 25 for a while. I think they upped it. But if it's under a certain amount of size, you won't be able to download on a 3G connection. They'll need Wi-Fi. And too many people think, well, if I'm past 50 megabytes, it doesn't matter. But there's a big difference between even a gig and 1.5 gigs. Because the bigger you are, the more likely you're going to get uninstalled. And if you're really big, even if your game's awesome, even if I play it every single day, I'm going to remove it and get 10 other games from the store. Because those 10 might suck, but as a consumer, the new is always going to be more interested than the no. So for Blast Monkeys, we pride ourselves that every update we did, and we were updating every two weeks, every update we did for the first six months, we were adding content and made the file size smaller. I believe at our peak lowest, it was a four megabyte game just to make it as tiny as possible. So when you look at that list of uninstalls, we were way at the bottom. Even speaking to the 3G download limit, you know, if you're at 50 megabytes, a lot of games are in that 45 to 50 megabyte range because they optimize just enough to be under there. So if you're at 30, you're already under a significant amount of your competition and you're just that much less likely to be uninstalled because people sort by size and delete whatever's on top of that list first. And, I, and I'll just say that, you know, this happens to me too. I'll go and uh, I'll be mobile and I'll say, hey, this game looks really awesome. I want to download it. Oh, wait, I've got to wait for a Wi-Fi connection. Mm -hmm. So I forget about it. Sure, it downloads when I get home and my phone connects to Wi-Fi, but it could be days or weeks before I go back and revisit that game and notice that it's in my app list. So I just want to make that comment. That's something I've noticed before. Yeah, absolutely. 
Next point I want to bring up is acquiring a users intelligently. So whatever you do to get users, whether that's a traditional ad, whether that's these other cross-promotion ways, you have to figure out where those users are coming from and how long they're staying. You can't just get a thousand users. An example I like to use is when you're doing ad buys, you can have analytics in your game to really know where that user came from and what their consumer lifetime value is. That is how much per average you earn per user. So you also figure out you know, how much is uh, cost uh, per install. So if I spend $1,000 on an ad campaign, as an example, and I get 1,000 installs from that, you can say that it costs me $1 per install. Numbers are not going to be like that in the real world, but just using that as an example to make the math easier. Now let's say that's some banner ads that I bought. Now there's a video ad where I pay $2,000 and I get 1,000 installs. Well, now that's $2 per install. Well, if you're just looking at the cost per install metric, if you're just looking at the cheapest users possible, you would say that the banner ad users are better because you get a dollar per, two dollars per, cheaper is better, right? Yeah. Not necessarily the case. Because the 2,000 per, that was a 30 second video. That's a user who watched your game for 30 seconds, thought that game is interesting, and then they're going to install it. As per my point earlier with the screenshots, that user knows what kind of game they're getting into, knows that they're going to be interested in that game, and they're much more likely to stick with it. They're much more likely to keep playing. So if you calculate the consumer lifetime value of the banner ad user, that might be someone who just tapped a banner ad randomly. That might be just someone who saw a random screenshot, thought uh, interesting enough, and downloaded it, and they didn't really stick with the game. So you might be earning 50 cents consumer lifetime value per user, but the video ad person, ideally, you would earn $2.01 or some amount higher than what your ad campaign costs. And in that case, you look, well, do I lose 50 cents or do I gain one cent? That's when you're golden. If you can get to the part where you're gaining money, that's when you can do a big buy. That's what the big companies do. They optimize their metrics, they start small, they get players in the game, they keep tweaking it, they analyze it, and they find the advertisement method that works for them, and they optimize it just enough where they'll earn one cent. That means that however much money I put into it, I'm gonna get that investment back. And then they can just keep putting money in and in and in, and continually gain very small margins but eventually they'll get that viral effect, get more and more people. And then that's how big bulk advertisement works. Even if you're not gonna end up doing that bulk, you should think about this. You should put analytics in your game. You should analyze where users are coming from, how long they're sticking with it. I shouldn't, if I ask you a question, say, well, how many of your users are playing the game today? How many quit within the first 15 minutes? If you don't know those answers, how do you know anything about your game and how well it's doing? number of downloads doesn't really tell you much. Well, let me ask you this too. I know we're talking about advertising, but what if the app store that I'm on comes to me and says, hey, we want to do a promotional deal with your app. Can you reduce the cost of it for a week? Yeah, Is that worth doing? Absolutely. In most cases, those kinds of deals are absolutely worth doing because you can get that featured placement. You'll get so many eyeballs on your game. You'll more likely earn way more than what you would have gotten having it at full price. You know, another thing to note too is that if you're seeking out those promotions right now, but you haven't optimized your game for that stickiness, if people play your game for 15 minutes and then uninstall it because it's kind of boring, it doesn't matter how featured you are. It doesn't matter how many downloads you get. It doesn't matter if you get 100 million downloads. If we're all just users gonna play for 15 minutes and uninstall, you're not gonna make any money. You know, 200,000 users daily active way better than 10 million downloads in a day. Yep. So that also brings up the stacking marketing. The more that you can do it once, the more marketing efforts that you can do, the higher up the rank you're gonna go. If you can get your ads aligned with a store featuring and something else, the more downloads at once, the higher up the ranks you'll get because you'll have that higher velocity and maximizing that velocity will shoot you up the charts. So if you can get a store placement, Try and line up as many ads as you can at that point. Cross promote with other people's games, post on different forms, do as much as you can at once because a big bump is much better than a small bump. Great. Next I wanna talk about beneficial behavior. Who's been in a game or an app or whatever it is and they start it up and you get a pop-up that says, hey, would you like to rate us in the store? 
You've seen that, right, yeah, Jason? Yeah. Yeah. Is that annoying to you? It's extremely annoying. Oh my God, it annoys me so much. I do not understand it. They're whatsoever. asking me to rate the game before I've even played it, which I is have really, seen really annoying. Games that people put millions.